Here's the band. Here's the hero. Here's the template. When they took the figures out, these kids just went bats. They just went crazy. Everyone thought, this is ridiculous. It's never going to be a hit. Between 82 and 87, He-Man represented roughly 95% of all the growth in the toy division. And suddenly, He-Man became, you know, this billion dollar empire. So we were frantically designing vehicles and accessories for He-Man. But it was going to be this toy. <laughs> now it's a big deal to play a toy or play a superhero. All the kids were raising the sword in there by the power of Grayskull. I really worked hard to try to find an original way to be that sort of cliche. When he messes, I have the power, it's saying to the kids, you don't have to do what you're told anymore. You can be your own person. When you first heard the name, it was so macho and so male chauvinistic. I said, no, you can never, I mean, that would never work. These are two of the earliest drawings that were ever done of He-Man. So this is a, a pen and ink version of Castle Grayskull. They had a bunch of characters designed, guys with muscles that have come ripping out of the forest and wreak havoc someplace. Uh, I told them we would be interested in doing it if we had total creative control. I sort of figured a way to write above their level and at their level at the same time which makes the, the stories kind of have some lasting shelf value. What was timely about it was hitting at exactly the moment to break open a whole new market, but to transform television and created an opportunity for all kinds of shows. By the power of Grayskull, I have the power! <laughs> yeah, you can do that stuff with his eyes. Does he need another take? Humans have a hunger for heroes. It's an idealized way of dealing with the real world. It was pretty it was pretty sad because it could have gone on forever. <laughs>